All right, everyone, welcome to my Feline Fridays. My name is Dr. Ray, and we are hanging out here today to investigate some feline friendly options. As you can see, we are at work today, and I don't know, I feel like we should change things up a little bit because today's topic, or today's food that we're going to be investigating, is kind of a fun one. It's Tiki Cat, and you know, it just doesn't seem just doesn't seem festive to be doing tiki cat and you know we're at work and not out in the sun having fun so maybe um maybe we can change things up a little bit so wait let's see let's see what we can do all right yeah this is better for feline friday all right we're gonna head on over to tikipet.com all right so here is the website really cute um giving me like I dream of genie vibes a little bit. Uh, their motto is Tiki Cat, the carnivore diet cats were born to eat. And so really festive, really fun packaging. Uh, the kibbles are really cute in some instances. They've got actually dog options and cat options. We're going to be focusing since it's feeling Friday on cats today. Um, if you head over to their list of products, They've got wet food, they've got dry food, treats, and meal toppers. Um, I actually emailed them. I had a request to review Tiki Cat, and when I decided to start Feline Fridays, I started emailing, 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 emailing all these companies, asking them for specific parameters, and you guys can do this too at home. What I did was I just simply said, do you have any diets that are low in minerals, low in calcium, low in phosphorus? And they actually were really receptive, and they sent me the list of their entire lines, dry matter basis analysis, and so we're going to be using that today. So we're going to go over to the wet food. Look at that. Looks nice. Benefits of Tiki Cat. High protein. Now we'll have some things to say about high protein. Um, the higher, the better is not really true. We, you know, we really want something that's appropriate. We don't really want to overload, but we'll go over that in a minute. High moisture. Great for finicky felines. They do have a variety real ingredients with real benefits and recognizable ingredients quality you can see with no byproducts filler or artificial ingredients so if that's something that interests you um, this might be the brand that you know fits your particular needs so they've got these mega packs which are you know various variety in there they've got the after dark series the special which are mousse formulas they've got high moisture meals which is their luau line velvet mousse Aloha Friends, Kitten Health, Senior Health, and then they have Grill. And so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using a chart that they provided for us. We're going to be going through that chart and we're going to be focusing on the parameters and how they compare to small animal clinical nutrition. So if you're new to this channel, we use small animal clinical nutrition, which is a textbook. There is a free link in the description box if you expand that below. And the reason why we use that textbook is we need something, some sort of data that is verifiable, has resources, has references. We need some sort of data to form some standards. And so it's very difficult out there. There are a lot of people that have different thoughts about, about you know, what parameters are appropriate, but small animal clinical nutrition actually is based on scientific research and the scientific studies and the research is in the reference of that textbook. So not only do we have the textbook for the reference, we have the references that the textbook references as well. And so that's a lot of referencing. And so I feel like that that is a good validated source for us to go ahead and use as standards. We don't want to get sucked in by emotions and these beautiful packages and the beautiful, um, you know, artwork and, and wonderful pictures and things like that. We don't want to get enamored by philosophies. There is an important distinction between something that someone has a philosophy about and something that is actual, true, and data-driven. And so on this channel, we try to you know, evaluate things unbiased. We try to use data and use a data-driven approach. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be following factual data that was provided to us by the company and referencing that back to small animal clinical nutrition. What I have focused on is a handful of parameters that I think are important and easy for you guys to find when you're at home doing this. And so my channel is 
it is about reviews and I do reviews on request, uh, but mostly those reviews are to facilitate a learning process. And so I want you guys to learn how to do this. So I have picked parameters that are easily um, gleaned from the package or it's not on the package, very easy for you guys to email the company and get. You're not getting into things that are really difficult to ascertain. This is a first line kind of baseline approach. And some people may choose, you know, to stop there. And some people might want to dive into some of the deeper topics. But that's what this channel is about. It's about a learning process and then using the foods that are requested to kind of facilitate the process. And so what I have done is I have selected five parameters and I have formed a PSS scoring system. Uh, those five parameters are going to be the AFCO statement, which is on every single package. It's going to be the feeding guide, which is on every single package, the guaranteed analysis, five parameters there. And then we're also going to be um, grading on whether or not it is grain free or raw. The reason why we are going to be grading on that is that that is not appropriate for every pet. Most of the general population does not need that. And there are some um, significant drawbacks to feeding grain free and raw. And those drawbacks may not necessarily outweigh the benefits. And so for those two parameters, grain free and raw, um, we do not want those on this channel. If your pet needs that specifically, then you don't fall into the general population. If your pet has a medical condition where you need that, then that needs to be done and monitored by your veterinarian. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to pull up some of the pictures here so that we can go through the diets and then we'll look at them in totality. So let's start out really quick. We're not going to do mega packs because that's just a variety pack. You've got the special line, which are creamy mousse formulas. Now these are all canned that we're doing today. So you can see here um, kind of this, they're calling it a mousse, but it is a kind of a whipped, very um, macerated, quality to it. They've got a couple different flavors there. Cats are very sensitive to texture, so you may find that one of these works better for your pet's digestion over the other. That is a real thing in cats. Don't see it too much in dogs unless there's a medical condition, but in cats, texture can play a very big role, and so it's nice that they're offering various texture. This here um, is the After Dark Tiki Cat. They have it in shredded chicken. They've got it in finely minced pate with meaty morsels. And then again, they've got the smooth mousse. And this is making me hungry because I'm filming this on my lunch break. I know that seems, maybe seems a little bit odd, but these actually do look really good, even to me right now, being hungry. They've got luau. Again, um, with you get the shredded, the shredded, and then you've kind of got a pate version so it's going to be a little bit probably thicker than the mousse. We've got the velvet mousse, not sure how that's different than the regular mousse. The Aloha friends, looks like we've got little um, chunks of pumpkin which is a fiber source in here. It looks like we've got little shrimp so it definitely is very appetizing to the eye. We've got the grill, a little bit bigger chunks, different options there. Okay, so before we move on to the canned food, as I promised, um, I am going to go ahead and flash up here the dry food options that they gave me. I did ask for their ones that are lowest in calcium and phosphorus. As you can see, um, we usually want calcium kind of below one, and all of them are in the two to three range. And then the phosphorus, we kind of want below 0 0.8, and these guys are all really high in that range too. So this is their Born Carnivore series. And so we're not going to be focusing on that today. Again, we're going to be doing the um, the canned food. Now, if you're doing this at home and you are not requesting uh, this information on a dry batter basis, you're going to be a little bit off. So yes, you can use the guaranteed analysis on the package. You will find that a lot of those packages do not have the calcium and phosphorus listed. They're not required to. And so you're going to have to probably email the company anyway. And so as you're doing that, just go ahead and ask for a dry matter basis because that's what the standards in small animal nutri nutrition are on. If not, you're going to have to do some conversions, and I do have some videos on that if, if you would like to learn how to do that. But it's just very easy, and if you have a good receptive company, they will go ahead and do that. And as you can see, Tiki Cat, they did provide. And so on the left-hand column, this is uh, the name of that, you know, that series of foods. Then you've got the flavor here. And then you've got all the parameters that I asked for on the right hand side. So we're going to be evaluating this for both seniors and for adults, because I feel like there might be some good options here for senior and I do get asked for senior options quite um, frequently. And so let's pull up, throw them up here. 
really quick, we'll go over what we're looking for. All right, so here we have laid out in front of us all the parameters that are needed for all the different life stages. And we are going to check, we're not going to check the life stage of all of them, but we're going to check a few of them just to see if they fall into the correct life stage, because that's a big deal. A lot of these companies are getting lazy and they're doing all life stages. And that's not really ideal because of the nutrient requirements that a kid needs for accelerated growth is going to be vastly different than an adult cat and certainly different than a senior cat. So a lot of people feel like if the life stage is incorrect on the package, you know, probably, you know, might be your first indicator to choose something different. Now we're going to go through all of them. We're going to use all the parameters that way we're not seriously limiting ourselves, but there are some people that, that do feel that. And so keep that in mind when you're, when you're looking at foods, you know, if you're not into doing these full analysis or you're in a pinch, you might just want to look at that APCO statement and see what life stage it's feeding for. So um, here you can see the difference between your kitten, your cat, and your senior cat. Kittens can um, ideally get a range of protein between 35 and 50, where you're a senior and your adult cat, we want to say kind of lower protein, 30 to 45. I know for a lot of you that may be new information um, because everywhere out there and all the marketing tells you and all you know, the people who maybe are not as in tuned with the data that more protein is better. And so that's not, you know, ac actually the case. There is an acceptable range, which could be quite, you know, quite wide, that's AFCO. And then there's an ideal range. And an ideal range is balancing um, the nutrient requirements as well as balancing kidney health, kidney function, and what's going to happen with that excessive amount of protein when the body doesn't utilize it. That's not getting stored. That has to get processed. And the more we're asking the body to process things, the more um, work is going into things like the kidneys. And cats being very prone to kidney disease, we need to be very in tune to that because there's no reason to over supplement them, especially a cat that's not I don't even know what an athletic cat would be. I mean, maybe an outside cat, but there's not, you know, there's not working cats. Cats spend a large part of the day um, sleeping. And so they don't need excessive, excessive, excessive amount of proteins. Yes, they're obligate carnivores, but there is an acceptable amount. And there is an amount that at some point, there is a straw that breaks the, the camel's back and it becomes deleterious. And we don't want to be gambling because it's different with every pet. And so this range, 30 to 45, is a range that are that most cats fall into as an ideal range. And so that's why we want to do that. In fact, all the numbers that I'm giving you in these charts are the ideal range. They are not AFCO because um, AFCO is quite large. These are the ideal range based on the data and the literature that is in that text that we talked about. So calcium for the kitten, we're okay with it between 0 0.8 and 1.6. So you can see quite a big range when you compare that to the senior and the adult. So in the cat, uh, senior and the adult, we really kind of want it between 0 0.6 and 1. And so that's what I asked for. And that's what hopefully we're going to find here in a minute. 0 0.6 and 1.4 on the phosphorus, as you can see, in the adult cat, we're 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. But in the senior, we're even more restricted at 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. Now, these charts are available to you. I do have a series of shorts where um, I'm going to be posting these. But you can also, um, you know, feel free to screenshot these and use them. They're coming straight from Small Animal Clinical Nutrition. I just put them in a nicer chart for us. So um, they're available for you. And I, I do encourage you to kind of have these in your back pocket when you're going through these foods. Um, I am listing some other parameters here, sat, sodium, vitamin E, vitamin C. I don't put that on my PSS system just because I wanted to keep it simple for this first line approach. But certainly those are parameters that you would want to investigate as you're getting deeper into these foods after the first line approach. So fat for the kitten, you'll see is a little bit different again than the um, senior and the regular adult. 18 to 35 versus 10 to 30 and 10 to 25. And that's because you're seeing the growth um, and energy, energy expenditure is getting less and less as the cat progresses from kitten to senior. And then we've got fiber, um, less than five for the kitten um, in the cat. And then you can see in the adult, we're acceptable, or the senior cat, we're acceptable at less than 10. That's because senior cats tend um, to have more issues with constipation and things like that. So they tend to be, you know, have an ideal fiber range that's a little bit higher than the kitten and the cat. Taurine is an essential nutrient, um, so we do want our taurine um, up here in the 1,000 to 2,500 parts per million um, as the, the hardest growing in the kitten, and then we want to maintain it at um, 1,000 to 2,000 in the senior and the adult cat. So those are the ranges that we're going to be shooting for, and we're going to apply those to the chart that Tiki Cat provided to us. Okay, so here is the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful chart. 
And so we're going to be going through all of these and paying close attention to the protein, the fat, the fiber, the calcium, and the phosphorus. Now, ideally, we know for the adult and the senior cat, we're going to want this phosphorus as close to 0 0.7 for the senior, as close to 0 0.8 for the adult cat, and then the kitten, we've got quite a, you know, quite a large range, 0 0.6 to 1.4. So we're going to go through, I'm going to highlight the ones that meet, let's just say adult. Um, actually, I'll put the ones that meet the kitten parameter, we're going to highlight in yellow. The ones that meet the adult, we're going to highlight in green. And the ones that meet the senior, we're going to highlight maybe in pink. And then we'll see which ones, um, well, that's going to be like a seizure, isn't it? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how I arrange this. But we're going to try to get all of them on there. I guess it would be easiest just to do one. But you know, we're here. It's feline Friday. And we're just, we're just going to see. Um, I am curious, honestly, to see what the APCO statement Let's see if we can find the APCO statement really quick before we move on. Again, we're not doing all of them. Let's just pick one, and then you certainly can go through and check out the APCO statement on all of them. Yeah, so it's maintenance. So they're going to get a point there for the APCO statement. They are formulated, so they're going to lose that point. For the APCO statement, they get two points, one if it's feeding child and one if it is the correct life stage. This is the correct life stage for an adult. So I think maybe we'll keep it simple and we'll just do the adult uh, and the senior. And there is no life stage for senior. So if you're looking for that in the APCO statement, you will never find it. You just need to know what parameters you're looking for if you're feeding a senior cat. And so we'll do senior, we'll leave out the kitten today. Um, if anybody wants to do kitten, you know, I have the parameters there, you can certainly do it for kitten, but we're going to stick with the uh, cat the adult cat and the senior cat today just for ease of not having a seizure while we're making the chart. Again, we're not using this guaranteed analysis here because we can see they don't list the calcium and phosphorus. We had to email them for that. And then the feeding guide, um, the important thing with canned food uh, with the feeding guide, we'll do that really quickly. Uh, you have to be careful because cans, um, mostly water, there's not a lot of calories in them. And so a lot of times you do have to feed multiple cans to get the correct calorie allotment. And so this particular can is 99 K cows per can. Uh, and so the adult, regular adult cat, we want between 200 and 300 calories. So ideally you would need two cans of this and they're suggesting for adult cats feed approximately two cans per day per seven pounds of body weight. So that's correct. So they're going to be getting the point for that. So right now with just the APCO statement and the feeding guide, they're already up to two points. And let's see what more, you know, what more points we can get as we go through this. All right. So just perusing through here, I can already tell you every single one of their protein is going to be in excess, which I'm not super happy about uh, because you never know when your cat is going to go from, you know, slightly insufficient in the kidneys to full-blown kidney disease. And so um, a lot of people I back and forth in the comments, and I do appreciate um, all the comments you all leave saying, you know, I've always fed a high protein uh, food and every year my cat goes to the vet and every year they get a great checkup. Um, that is great. And I'm happy for that. But please keep in mind that if you're not doing blood work yearly, your veterinarian is not going to detect that your cat has clinical signs related to kidney disease till 75% of the kidneys are gone. And so, yes, it's great you go in every year, and I want you to go in every year and get your checkup, but there are limitations to what a veterinarian can see on physical exam. We need to do the, that blood work to make sure that everything is, is functioning properly. We need to check the BUN. We need to check the creatinine. We need to check the urine concentration. That's how we know if your pet's getting into kidney disease. And if we can catch it early when maybe there's only 30% loss, um, then we can do something and we can slow it down because we can't correct, you know, we can't give you kidney function back we can slow the progression down. And so if you come to me with your cat already not eating, vomiting, losing weight, anemic, um, that means that clinically there's probably already 75% damage. And to slow, to slow the progression down when we're already not eating, not drinking and all those things, um, that's going to be really hard. And we're not going to, I'm not going to be able to give you a lot of longevity, you know, back to your cat. And so I always tell people, um, you know, DVM, not GOD. Uh, my physical exam can only take me so far. I need those extra tools. And so if you like this food and you've decided to feed this food, knowing that it is, you know, a little bit or a lot bit in some cases excessive in protein, be proactive. Get that blood work done every year. 
I'm not telling you not to feed this food. Um, it may be, for whatever reason, the best option for you, but just take the appropriate precautions. And so those appropriate precautions are going to be, you know, checking that blood work regularly so we don't get into a situation where, um, you know, I physically can't help you anymore. So know that all, every single one of their options is um, excessive in the protein and you need to take additional precautions if you decide to feed this food. All right, fat. We have fat ranging everywhere from um, the lowest being 11.59 all the way up to the highest here on the After Dark Velvet Mousse recipe um, at 30.2, 30.2 on the light chicken turkey pumpkin. Not sure how that's light. Yeah, not sure how that's light. High there. And then... Um, the highest mousse and shreds, and then we have the absolute highest in fat option is going to be the mousse and shreds chicken salmon and chicken liver recipe in chicken broth. Asterisks there. She didn't tell me um, why there are asterisks there. She did not give me that information, and I did not realize that till just now, so I don't know what these asterisks mean. Um, but we can always email them for additional information if we find out at the end that this is something we are going to consider to feed. Now, parameter-wise, what are we going to be looking at? For our senior cat, for the fat, and again, we said a little bit lower fat, 10 to 25. Where our adult cat, we can give it a little bit more wiggle room and go up to 30. And so most, all these are going to meet the minimum. So you're fine minimum-wise. Um, fat, as far as maximum, pretty good, pretty close except um you know we have this one here which is slightly over for the adult and then um you know 25 you know that you do have quite a few options that are going to be less than 25 so that for the most part is going to fall in the range and again we're going to color code this at the end carbs in um cats is i get questions about carbs a lot there is no established upper limit for carbs in the cat do cats need carbs? No, they're obligate carnivores. They do not need carbs. But you will find that if you feed a food that is completely devoid of carbs or you feed a food that is only, only, only got protein, you're going to have issues with constipation. You're going to be missing out on some of the other nutrients that you need if you totally devoid a diet of carbs. So in the wild, cats are not going to eat just meat. They are going to eat other things. They're going to eat the intestines of animals and things like that, which have greens and foliage in there. So if you ever go to like a board certified um, nutritionist and you want to do a home cooked diet, which I do recommend if you're into that to seek the um, help of a board certified veterinary nutritionist, a lot of the ones that I see coming have like green tripe in there, which is um, the intestines with the ingesta in there of like ruminants and things like that. That's where they're getting like their fiber and their carbs from. So they do eat it. Um, and, you know, maybe they don't need it to serve, you know, it's not required for them to survive, but they do lead a healthier life if they have some amount of that in there. And so that's why um, I know a lot of people are you know, fixated on carbs and they do have some diets that have zero carbs and there isn't a carb requirement. But when you do that, you can see you get this really, really, really high excessive amount of um, you know, protein, which could be deleterious. So as you add some carbs and you're able like down here on the tilapia version, by adding in some of those carbs, you're able to get that protein level down. And so it's all about balancing here. It's not about overloading. It's about, um, companies that are able to take all the, um, options available to them and balance it to provide you a product that is going to be optimal. And so they have quite a few options and you can see that in play here with, with their particular diet. So that's a deal with the carbs. Yes. If you have a cat that's diabetic, you know, restricting carbs again, may be good, but there's no reason to restrict them down to zero. Um, you know, we can find a nice balanced diet. That's the best of both worlds by utilizing a little bit of carbs in there. Again, here we go with the fiber. Um, you know, we need fiber to be a little bit higher in the senior and we can get away with lower all these are going to be okay but they are very low in fiber so this particular guy is super low on fiber so if you have a cat that struggles with constipation this is a canned food so you're going to get that extra moisture the fiber content's really low and so you may end up having to add extra fiber on there they did have some diets if you remember that were pumpkin and i know a big thing and um, i have a lot of clients tell me well i added pumpkin um, pumpkin does add fiber to the diet, uh, but sometimes it's, it's not enough. So right here, light chicken, turkey, and pumpkin. 
you know, that's only 0.41 fiber. A lot of the other diets we see um, have a lot more fiber and cats still get constipated. So people are like, oh, that fiber, that's just, um, you know, cellulose and, 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 and sticks and stuff like that. No, that you do, <laughs> fiber does help cats. And so if you have a cat that's prone to constipation, um, you may need to add a fiber supplement. And so you can check with your veterinarian again on this if you need you know, instruction on how to properly supplement fiber because your cat has a medical condition that requires it. Um, as you can see, simply just putting pumpkin in there is not really going to get you very far because it still is an over one, even with adding pumpkin. Ash um, is a terminology. I'm not going to go into that. Um, Glenn at Pet Food Puzzle Guy has a good video on ash, which is a fancy way of saying minerals. It has to do with the processing and back in the day how they used to um, calculate minerals and it had to do with, I think, something like burning up the food and then the amount of ash that was left over. That was the minerals. But you can go check out his video and he's got a lot of awesome other videos as well. Um, I think that you might enjoy some of his perspectives. But if you want to learn more about ash, um, I am going to defer to him on that. Now we get over here into the minerals, phosphorus and calcium. I'm not going to go into the potassium, magnesium, and sodium, um, but these are important, uh, especially if you have a pet with kidney disease or, or urinary stones. These values can become very important. And um, one day I do hope to do a dedicated video on urinary health, and we will get more into those minerals. Um, but today we're just going to focus on the phosphorus and calcium. Now, um, we talked about this. Um, we want the calcium to be close to or equal one. And so they do have a few diets that meet those parameters. So um, the very first one, the chicken after dark is pretty close. And um, we've got down here the ahi tuna and chicken at 0 0.98 is nicely in the reference range. 1.02 on the after dark velvet mousse. And these are a little bit higher than I would want. We're going to stick to the ones that are lower, 0 0.88. Um, that's wonderful. We've got the silver moose and shreds, chicken, salmon, liver, um, and the chicken broth. So right, right there is a good option. None of them are going to be below that 0 0.7 for the senior. So if you have a senior, you know, maybe this one. And then let's get into the phosphorus. None of them um, met the 0 0.7 maximum uh, for the senior, unfortunately. We didn't get any that were super close to that. There were some pretty darn close. So down here, the tuna mackerel, um, we've got the chicken recipe broth at 0 0.9, pretty good option. 9.6 for the fussy duck, 9.9, the tiki cat luau, sea bass is pretty close, wild salmon pretty close. chicken with egg. So we can, you know, we can see here which ones um, are going to be the closest. And so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go through now that we've kind of perused the chart and become familiar with it, I'm going to go ahead and highlight all the ones. Um, and we're going to give these a final score. And we're going to highlight the ones that are appropriate so that you guys can make the option that maybe is most appropriate for you. Okay, so I have color coded the chart for you to give you kind of a quick visual. Now, there are definitely some really good options here. Again, you got to take into effect, you know, with cats specifically, not so much dogs because, you know, most dogs that are picky eaters are picky eaters because we've trained them to be that way. Cats legitimately do have a lot of times um, a textural issue that can result in vomiting and anorexia and things like that. And so, um, there are some options here that maybe will fall out a little bit of the recommended ranges, but are pretty close. We're not going to be looking at those specifically in this video, but you've got the charts and you can dive into them further. And so if you remember, they got, um, they were not grain-free and raw, so we've got two points on all the diets there. They were the correct life stage, so we're up to three points. The feeding guide was okay, we're up to four points. And now you can see on the color coded So yes, again, there are less um, options that are available for our senior cats, but um, there are there are some good there are some good options here for um, the adult. And so that's gonna sh that's gonna bring up um, the uh, after dark chicken to a four, five, six, seven. A seven also on the chicken and beef recipe in chicken broth after dark moose. A seven on the ahi tuna and chicken luau. A seven for the adult on the special fussy duck with liver and egg. And a seven on the moose and shreds salmon and chicken liver recipe uh, chicken broth. 
And then I, I put this here. This is kind of an honorable mention. They didn't have any that met the phosphorus levels that are ideal, but they did have one that was lower in phosphorus at 0 0.88. And so there was kind of an honorable mention there, but still didn't meet the mark in order for me to give them a point. And so I hope that you enjoyed that and you learned something today. Again, this this is a process. It's, you know, my videos are more to teach you guys how to do this so that you can use your own brain and use factual data and not get sucked into some of the emotional, you know, marketing things and the fad things and the it phrases and all that. They can kind of cloud your judgment at what is important at the very, you know, at the very base. And so if this is a diet that interests you, um, you know, there are some good options here that you might want to consider. Uh, if you have a pet that you are trying to medically manage a disease like kidney disease or stone, uh, urinary stones or crystals or anything like that, uh, definitely consult with your veterinarian if you know one of these options may be appropriate or if there may be a more appropriate option, which may end up being a prescription. And so I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, you know, in our Tiki Hut evaluating Tiki cat food. And um, this was canned food variety. I will flash up again here some of the parameters that they gave me for their dry foods if you're interested. And I hope you guys will join me um, on Purse Day, which we talk about all kinds of things on Purse Day. Definitely join me next week again for Feline Fridays for some feline friendly options. All right, guys, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye.